three, two, one. And I believe we are live any second now. And I'll, if you see me looking down, it's, uh, I'm not texting. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm taking no. questions um, and watching on the live. And yep, we are live. So awesome. um, Mike McCallowitz, McCallowitz, McCallowitz. Right? <laughs> you, you actually yes. nailed it three times in a row. So it's perfect. Great. Well, uh, Mike, um, Mike and I had a great opportunity to chat. If you guys are joining us right now, you know, I've been talking about this interview for a long time. Uh, welcome to the growth secrets for advisors, for agents, advisors, and sales pros. We've got a lot of entrepreneurs in here. We've got a lot of business owners and I have been recommending Mike's book to everybody with an earshot, especially if like me, you did not get uh, a business or a finance degree. And frankly, even if you did, it would be good to unlearn a lot of that stuff. So with that, Mike, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited to have this conversation. Reed, that was a great introduction. And, and unlearning the stuff we've been told is very helpful. We're, we're told a lot of stuff that's mythology around finances, and I hope we can fix it in our discussion today. That's great. Yeah, I, I, like, I like the term. It's, it's mythological in that it just it's, it's, it doesn't work in real life. And so uh, your thesis, and I'm going to summarize it very simply and very quickly, and then allow you to, to dive in there, is that everything we've learned about how to manage money for small businesses and even larger businesses, but, but especially as business owners, is all wrong. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that? Well, there's a foundational financial principle. Uh, I write about this in Profit First, but there's a foundational principle called GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles. And what we've been told is that profit comes after we have sales. So we have to have sales. We then subtract expenses and the, that result is profit. And um, this is, as I said, it's a generally accepted accounting principle. It's the established accounting axiom. And um, the problem with this I read a statistic and I don't know the exact source anymore, but it does reverberate to be true. 83% of small businesses, SBA considers a small business as a company that does $25 million in revenue or less. That's a lot of, that's my business for sure. Probably some of our listeners. 83% of business. Yeah, right, right. 83% of these businesses are surviving check by check. It's, they're on the verge of going out of business because they're not profitable. And what my thesis is, is that, Profit coming last is the worst thing we can do for our business. It's even in, in our vernacular. We call it the bottom line. We call it the year end. All terms that say it comes last. And it's human nature from a behavioral standpoint. When something comes last, it means it's insignificant. It's the manana syndrome. It can wait. So for most businesses in practice, profit doesn't happen. And when, when we look at the year end and it's not there, it's like, oh man, another bad year. Maybe next year. We literally delay the consideration of profit for another 365 days. What I argue in Profit First is that we flip the formula. It's now sales minus profit equals expenses. And what I'm saying in practice as revenue flows into your business, you're, you generate commissions, sales, whatever that revenue is, we take a predetermined percentage of that money, allocate it to a hidden account called profit, hide it from our business operations, and then our business tells us what's truly available to operate on. It's the pay yourself first principle simply applied to business. So I... I want to key in on something you said there. You, you talked about that, that pay yourself first principle. Um, even saying that sounds uh, like a duh statement, right? It sounds, it's, it's something that in our personal financial yeah. situation, we, we think, oh yeah, well, that's one of those old axioms that we've heard since hopefully we, we were told this when we first got started out, but we don't apply that to business. And it seems so backwards and it seems so, uh, just just uh, wrong thinking to think that, no, we have to wait and just hope that there's some profit at the end of the year when that's the whole reason we got into business. Am I, is that fair? Yeah, that, that's the shame of it. I, I literally, we were just talking off air. I returned from Marietta, uh, from you know Atlanta area for a speaking engagement to small business owners, chiropractors. I flew out to Chicago where I was last night and spoke to 1,700 realtors. Um, all independent contractors, small business owners. And almost all of them through surveys, I just simply ask, I say, you know, who's here 
honestly is checking their bank account regularly and, and finding it to be empty. And all the hands went up. And I said, who here started your business for financial freedom? And all the hands went up. And I said, isn't that funny? The core reason we start business, maybe just two, is financial freedom and to do what makes us feel empowered and joyful. Like the, those two core elements are the two things that don't happen. We have no money. We feel constant stress. We hate our business. I said, isn't that ironic? But the funny thing is we do all the other elements. We're attracting customers and prospects. We're serving them. We're delivering our products and services. We manage, if we have teams, you know, we're managing our colleagues. Like we, we get hundreds of pieces right. What's wrong, particularly with the profit element? And that's when I discovered and felt that this established formula is nonsense. I mean, from a logical standpoint, it is deadly accurate. Of course, you have to have sales. Of course, when you have to subtract expenses and what's left over is profit from a logical standpoint. The thing is in behavioral execution, that's not how we work. We prioritize what comes first. Like I would never, I would never put profit last, just like I'd never say, you know, I'm going to start putting my health last. Finally, you know, I love my family so much. That's why I put them last. When something is important, we put it first. So with profit, when we take it first, it will get prioritized. And what I was saying that profit is not an event, meaning it's not an eventuality. Profit's not an event. Profit is a habit. By paying ourselves first, by taking that profit first, we're baking profit into every transaction. And the remaining money is left to operate our business. And if we don't have enough money to operate our business, that's our business now speaking to us saying there's something fundamentally flawed. You want to achieve this profit. You want to take five or 10 or 20% or whatever the number is, and you can't support any expenses. There's something wrong with your margins or there's something wrong with your costs. And we need to address those things. So your business starts to speak to you because you're reverse engineering profit. So that was a, I guess it was a chapter or just, just a point in, in the book and in your philosophy that really, you know, I say convicted me because you, you make the statement, I think, where you say that if you uh, or, or when one uh, has to operate their business on that 30%, which, which guys, if you're, if you're watching and, and these numbers, these allocations don't make a lot of sense to you, uh, check out the book. Uh, Mike has a lot of what he calls target. Uh, is it tap the, the target, yeah, target allocation, allocation percentages. percentages? Yeah, it's all in profit first, the book. Correct. And so you have to be entrepreneurial. That's what being entrepreneurial is all about, is figuring out how to operate your business on a set fixed percentage of your revenue, as opposed to just running and just operating on what's available in the bank account. And that requires discipline. That is what business building is actually about. It's about being creative and using that. That's what punched me right in the gut for one. Yeah, I think entrepreneurship, the, the, the element that really is our biggest opportunity is the innovative mindset. So what we're doing profit first, instead of uh, the entrepreneur saying, give me all the money you've got business and I'm gonna figure something out. The business now says, here's the money you've got. Five bucks, $5,000, whatever it is. Here's the business you got. You figured out entrepreneur. And there's this concept called Parkinson's law. I explain it extensively in Profit First, but the, the concept of Parkinson's law, he was a theorist in the 1950s studying human behavior. What he realizes that as supply increases, our demand will increase with it. Now, a lot of his studies were around time. And uh, Reed, if you and I were discussing a contract and I said, hey, I'll get you that agreement in you know, one week, it'll likely take me a full week to complete the agreement and get it to you. But the same guys have the same conversation about the exact same parameters, except I say, I'll get to you in one day, I'll probably get done in one day because I've constrained the amount of time. Now I got to crank through this and prioritize it. Well, it's true for money too. If we're giving a large sum of money, we will find a way to spend it all. Large supply, we consume it all. But Parkinson's always also pointed out as we constrain the supply that we're, it's called forced frugality, we'll consume less. Additionally, we'll become highly innovative. So now as we restrict the money flow into your business because we've taken our profit first, now your business tells you it's truly available, but now the innovative mind kicks in. It's like, how do I make those goals I have become a reality with this constrained amount of money? The beautiful thing is this is how you start challenging the industry norms. We don't just say, well, everyone else in the industry spends X number of dollars. I have to too. Now we say, how do I drive the same results less expensively? And that's the definition of entrepreneurship, growing efficiencies, innovative thinking, and all that will happen automatically when you take profit first. So I like that. So that's a, there's a good, uh, good opportunity to segue here. So for the folks who are watching this, whether uh, it's live or recorded, and, and guys, real quick, if you're watching this uh, live right now, do me a favor and just comment live uh, in the comment box below. And if you're watching this later on the replay, just leave a comment with, with the word replay. That helps me to know who's watching when. Um, but Mike, if you don't mind, 
give give the folks watching some some of a, a a place to start, right? Yeah, this yeah. can feel really intimidating if you've been running your business a certain way and maybe you don't really even know. I mean, when I started this, I I was kind of ashamed. I didn't even realize how much I was spending and, and what I was spending it on and where it was going. Yeah. Well, there's a term for that. It's called being a human being. It's, <laughs> it's very normal. It's very typical. And uh, while there, I can outline all the steps, there's four major steps where I've come to realize, and I've been teaching this now for years, is that it can overwhelm business. So I'll give you two simple steps that will get you started. And it can be done literally by the end of watching this podcast or broadcast, and uh, it will drive permanent profit in your business. Here's what it is. We have the first ever realization that most business owners, most independent contractors, most people run their lives and most business owners, their business by doing what's called bank balance accounting. Bank balance accounting is where I log into my bank account and see if I have money. And if I do, I spend it. And if I don't, you know, panic ensues. What we don't do is log into our accounting system, figure out all the numbers, tie the ratios in and all that stuff. We, we, we look at our bank account and we trust our gut. Therefore, we need a system that resides within our natural behavioral path. If by default, you run your business out of your bank account, you must have a system that sits there because otherwise we'll, we'll subvert around it. So set up accounts at your bank. Now, to get started, what I suggest is to set one account in your bank and call it profit. So it's a savings account, call it profit. It may take a half hour. When you got to drive to the bank and you spend a half hour down there. Actually, I found a shortcut. You can email your bank in advance and tell them that you're going to set up a savings account where they please have all the paperwork completed so that when you come by, you can sign it. Now you get it done in five minutes. But get that bank account set up. Step two is allocate only 1% of your income. What I'm saying is if a thousand bucks comes in, you take $10, you transfer it to the profit account. Because the impact on your operations is insignificant. You know, if you can live, if your business can survive off $1,000, your business can survive off $990, you'll find a way. That's very easy. But what's highly consequential is you'll start seeing cash accumulating in that profit account. And this is where I found the confidence kicks in. It's like, hey, man, if I can do it with 1%, why not try 2% or 3 or 4 And we start amplifying this. When we, then we start rolling out the other accounts that we suggest and taking the ultimate steps. We have now... This is a rough estimate, but um, we're pretty sure it's within this ballpark. There's over 300,000 businesses or around 300,000 businesses, I should say, that are doing profit first today. And we do have thousands of case studies. The successful businesses have started slow and let it grow. They, they, they've built their way into profit first. They haven't, in profit first, I outlined the entire system. They haven't put their business in it and turned full throttle. It's like, if you've never run a marathon, on your very first day to try to run a marathon, you'll probably tear every ligament in your body. You've got to build up to it. So businesses that start slow have been very successful and ultimately went full throttle with the full system, but it takes them six months to roll into it or eight months. And, and I have the, the process outlined in the book that you can throttle into it. I, I wouldn't just jump into it full, full, fur, full burst. I think that's good advice. I mean, it, it's a lot like, and I think you use this analogy and maybe I think it was a TED talk or something that you did where uh, about diet, right? And fitness. Yeah. And if you're going to say, well, I, I'm going to lose 25 pounds and I'm, and I'm going to cut carbs and I'm going to run 10 miles a day yeah. and I'm going to go to the gym five times a week and I'm never going to eat sweets again. You're not going to do that. It's not going to happen, right? You're not just going to, it's just too much. It'll overwhelm you. You'll revert back to your, your regular habits. So if you say, I'm going to start taking 25% uh, out of every, you know, every month's revenue, and that's going to be my profit tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Too much, too much. And, and what we have to do, and it's interesting, I studied a lot of physical fitness. I, I found there's so many parallels in life. In this case, physical fitness translates to fiscal fitness. There's no question. And uh, one thing I did for my own physical fitness as I was experimenting with this is this concept of intercepting behavioral paths. What I did when it came to physical fitness, I said, you know, every morning I want to go and work out. Um, but as haphazard, and I had a million reasons to sleep in or skip. Well, I then asked myself very consciously, well, what do I naturally do? What's my path? And I noticed when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I walk into the bathroom and use the bathroom. Okay, that's where I'm going first and I'm doing it consistently. I'm gonna put my sneakers on top of the toilet. So that's what I literally said. Every morning when I wake up, I go into the bathroom. I cannot use the bathroom without grabbing my sneakers. That's the first small baby step. The sneakers are now in my hands. Oh, the sneakers in my hands. I'm like, put the sneakers on. Once the sneakers are on, I'm like, just go for the walk. Once I'm walking, I'm like, you know what? Let's get the run going and I'm off. Or let me hit the gym and I'm off. By intercepting what you currently do and doing it, in this, seeking out the smallest step, 
you're likely to get the momentum effect kicking in. And that's why I tell people, start off with 1%, set up at your bank. You have to see it because you're going to your bank account anyway. Chances of your success now start to increase. It's so inconsequential, so small, but you'll get that momentum going. Yeah. And, and folks, let me tell you about the effect that it has on your psyche <clears> when you start to see, you know, two or three months in, you're like, I've got, I'm, I'm, I've got some money there. Right. And you start to see what, yeah, you start to think about like, Ooh, you know, at the end of the quarter, I'm going to take out and, and your book recommends, I think what 50% of that that you take yes. out. Like, Ooh, what that, am I going to get to do with that? Right. And it, it pushes you, even if it's a small amount, right. It feels great. Yeah. So uh, what we do is we start accumulating profit. The next technique is profit distributions. And uh, there's in the book, I outline how to manage debt and so forth. We have to address that. And we always need to reward ourselves. As I studied behavioral psychology, what I've discovered, and listen, I'm not a uh, certified behavioral psychology. I'm not a psychologist. These are just my understandings from a very amateur hobbyist kind of standpoint. But what I've discovered is that the importance of dopamine response. Every time we take a profit, there is a reward mechanism that kicks off. And when we, we get that reward, it actually builds our muscle momentum and our desire to experience it again. The mistake is some people allocate profit and they don't touch it. It now becomes this miser effect. It's like, well, I got money piling up. I'm not going to touch it. And then they get really super scared about its preservation of the rest, the reserve of cash. What we actually want to do is take out a portion, not all of it, but a portion of it. And I have this 50% rule on how it works so that we have a dopamine response. We're like, hey, I'm rewarding myself. Now, this is not a normalized compensation. I also explain that. It's not a normalized compensation. That's what I call owner's compensation. That supports your lifestyle. Profit is a celebratory reward for being a shareholder in a business. And you use this to splurge. And the funny thing is I've been doing this for myself for now. Uh, I'm on my 11th year. I've had 42 or 43 consecutive quarters of profit distributions every single quarter. The first time I did it was truly $8 was my distribution. And you know, I went to the bank. I'm like, yeah, please take it out in singles. You know, let's break it up into bills. Yeah. <laughs> and so all in I, one place. Yeah, no, 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 not all in one place. Let's break it up, right? I, I went to Starbucks and, you know, I flopped down the eight bucks. I'm like, hey, give me what you can, which at Starbucks basically is a small coffee. <laughs> but um, that coffee was the greatest coffee I had in my life because for the first time ever, I wasn't using a credit card. I wasn't pulling from the operations of the business as an expense. All it was was a reward for me. My business said, thanks for owning you, for owning me. Do whatever you want with this. It felt so rewarding. It built my confidence. And then the next time it was bigger and bigger and bigger. And now it's supporting activities and, and things I've done that I, I only have dreamed of. The goal with this is to build that momentum. So it's not about getting rich overnight. This, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is a get wealthy deliberately over time process. We have to have these small wins. We must reward ourselves consistently. And I suggest on a quarterly basis and it builds that profit muscle. So you, you, you bring up a good point here because you talk about uh, really, really taking advantage of or, or not taking for granted the idea that you own the business, right? And you're not yeah. just uh, a, an employee working for a bad boss that happens to be yourself, right? There has to be <laughs> some kind boss. of, yeah, there has to be some kind of, of benefit to that. But one thing that your book really, really helped me with is, is again, coming into being, a, I was a 20, I think I was 24 years old when I, when I started this business and, and had no idea what I was doing. Right. I didn't know how much to responsibly pay myself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That a lot of times was just, is there money in the bank account that I can, that I can pay myself? And, and you in a lot of ways gave me permission to just give this this percentage and say, okay, that's a responsible amount of money that when I move it into my my owner pay account, I know that next pay period, I've got plenty in there to pay myself, right? And so that's another one of those psychological benefits of this system that I'd appreciate if you can talk about. Yeah, well, thank you for saying that. That was something I didn't even really appreciate. And I've heard that feedback with some regularity is, is this concept of permission. I've also heard, and it was by design that we now start to live within the confines of this owner pay. So there's these two distinct accounts. There's actually multiple, more than two that benefit the owners also a tax account, but the, the profit account is a reward for being a shareholder. I want everyone to realize that only 7% of the world population will ever try to start or actually start a business uh, or invest in a business. 
This is the vast, vast minority of our population. The other 93% will work for the people who start businesses. So you, you are supporting the global economy. And as a shareholder, if someone that took on that extraordinary risk, you will get a reward. And that's what a profit distribution is. So it's a reward for supporting our economy. The owner's compensation is if you work within your business and most small business owners do. So you're an employee also of your own business. This owner's compensation is your normalized salary, the equivalent of what you'd pay if you had to hire someone to replace you. That's what your lifestyle is. You should live your life off the owner's compensation. And the profit account is a bonus that comes out every quarter as a thank you. The, the mistake many entrepreneurs make is they don't know how much they should be taking. They, they determine their lifestyle based upon it the cumulative distributions they take regardless of what form they come in and they maximize their lifestyle based upon what they have coming out. And the day there's a dip in income or there's a struggle, now not only is the business struggling, their own lifestyle is struggling. So with the profit first system, we set a expectation for your salary. Um, and there's this bonus that profit comes out that gives you a cushion. Should there be a dip, there's accumulated profits that you can also support yourself. So it gives you some kind of protection. It doesn't, it prevents you from living too large. You, you, you're forced to live within your means. There's also a tax account. Now, this tax account is reserved for the biggest bill every business owner gets that is the most neglected bill. It's the tax bill. At the end of the year, end of the quarter, so many business owners are like, I owe how much to who? It, it, it surprises us every single time. And we talked about this earlier. You know, we've started our business in part for financial freedom. And the definition of financial freedom is not worrying about your bills. So we're not going to worry about the tax bill. Your business is now going to reserve your tax liabilities for you. And uh, this is regards to the formation of the business you have. You can have an LLC, a sole proprietorship. You can have an S Corp or C Corp. Your business can always pay your taxes. Now, in certain situations, like an S Corp, C Corp, it can't pay them directly. You have to do what's called a W-2 submission and take tax out of your paycheck. But the business can do what's called a tax distribution reimbursement. And it can actually return the tax that you pay to you. So the business can always handle your taxes on your behalf. So by having these accounts set up, Financial freedom is achieved. You're not worrying about your biggest bill. You know what you should live your lifestyle, the means within, that's the owner comp. And you're getting a beautiful bonus at the end of every quarter to live life, to celebrate the way you define it. Yeah, and so, so another good point about, about that tax piece, that tax piece, uh, the, everyone's favorite topic. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's a popular, I don't want to say popular, and I have to be very careful about how I talk about this. I know no one really wants to, to admit this, but but as business owners, uh, minimizing taxes is, is an important thing. Sure. Um, you take somewhat of a, a almost counter entrepreneurial cultural approach on this. And, and forgive me if I'm misrepresenting, but, but my interpretation of what you say is that like, look, just put the daggum money away for taxes and run your business and live your life, right? You're going to have to pay the taxes uh, don't do things that would be counterproductive for the business just to minimize taxes. That And that's the key point right there. Many people try to mitigate taxes through a reactionary mechanism. They say, oh my gosh, this tax bill came. I wasn't expecting it. Um, then the accountant even may give advice and say, spend as much money as you can within the business, buy stuff because that's going to reduce your tax bill. So you know, rack up even debt to reduce your tax consequence which basically is saying, spend $10 to save three. It's totally illogical. It's highly reactionary. And the damage, we're just basically kicking the can down the road. We're, we're, we're leveraging ourselves to the hilt. And uh, we're, we're going to pay the piper just later on. If you pay taxes, the only way to pay taxes is that you are showing sustainable profitability. So first of all, taxes in that regard, at least is an affirmation or confirmation that your business is healthy. Um, so taxes are a necessary consequence. Now, I think we should take appropriate actions to mitigate and reduce our taxes. I'm not saying just pay them because they're there. Work with your accountant and bookkeeper closely to reduce them legally as much as you can. And uh, when there's appropriate expenses, you spend it there. But we should also reserve taxes um, because a tax bill is going to come. But do it through the business to avoid what's called loss aversion. This is another behavioral mechanism. And what loss aversion is, is a human response that once we possess something, we put such significance in it that we become illogical in the, in the, in the attempt to retain it. Here's an example with money. If, if I read, went up to you and said, hey, Reed, uh, here's, 10, here's 10 bucks. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, you'll, you may say thanks or whatever. You'll have an emotion associated with it. Interestingly, if I came to you and said, hey, Reed, here's 20 bucks. And you said, thanks. I said, oh, give me 10 bucks back, man. Uh, you owe me 10 bucks. 
uh, there's actually a negative association with that because you'd gained 20 and now lost 10. Now, the net effect is in both cases, you actually gained 10. But our emotion is receive, pull away. There's a negative aversion and we actually feel this negative emotion and act often illogically. Well, that's what's happening with taxes in the traditional sense. We get paid a certain amount of money. Then the government says, well, you owe us that much in taxes. And it's like, whoa, what are you doing? The interesting behavioral response is when the business reserves the taxes on our behalf, it never gives it to us in the first place. So when that tax bill comes, the business pays it. We never felt it. We were never given that 20 bucks in the first place. We were just given 10 bucks. We're like, hey, thanks for the 10 bucks. So we don't experience loss aversion. I get, I can't tell you how many emails I get when tax time comes at the end of every quarter, particularly year end. I get a funnel of emails with people saying, I can't believe how much fun it was to pay taxes. And it, it's crazy to say that, but I do understand the behavior because we don't experience loss aversion because the business reserved it for us. That's, that's such a good uh, perspective, I guess, to, to take on this is, um, is, is running a business and owning a business and, and managing your finances, it is 80% emotional and psychological yeah. and maybe 10 to 20% mathematical it, and, and mechanical. You know, it's it, these you things it. that you're, that you're, you know, preaching, they are, I, I like, I had a college professor who said, it's, it's not rocket surgery, it's brain science. Like, I remember, <laughs> you know, I'm reading the book. I remember I read it for the first time. I was at the beach with my family. And I mean, I had a pen out there in the sand and I'm just, just scribbling notes like crazy. And, and guys, if you're, when you read the book, um, it's one of those where you just like, that, that's right. Like that's, it makes so much sense, but it's, it's not. And I hope you, you take this as a compliment. It's, not a revolutionary new idea it's right. this makes sense do this and then then most of the book is this is how to think about that and that's the transformational piece of it I, thank you i take that as the ultimate acknowledgement i am flattered you said that this is an established process it's the pay yourself first system it's the envelope system something that's, that's been documented in think and grow rich richest man in babylon i mean it's existed for eons I'm just the guy who says this translates to business too and set up and, and we can modernize it with bank accounts. But this methodology is proven. And what it does is it works with human wiring. We have effectively been wired the same. Yes, society and technology has advanced rapidly, but the human genome, the human wiring is moving forward at a very slow rate. We, we morph very little. So we're basically the same as we've always been. So what worked 100 or two or 300 years ago works today from a behavioral aspect. And that's all we're doing here. It still works, has, and it will continue to work. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, so Mike, I want to be sensitive of your time and, and of the viewers. Nice. Uh, we talked about where to start. Uh, what should we do next, right? How can we go deeper and how can we really build our businesses to just optimize it as much as we can? Yeah. So, I do have resources, so I love to share that. If if you want to explore profit first in depth, and I also have a complimentary suite of of books and resources I've written that drives us forward. I guess the the ultimate spot or starting point is uh, my website, which is mikemotorbike.com. It's actually mikemichalowitz.com, but no one can spell Michalowitz, let alone pronounce it. So Mike Motorbike was my nickname in high school, uh, and it rhymes, so it's easy to find. So go to mikemotorbike.com. Click on the option. You'll see it very prevalently. It says, get the tools. And um, within one email, I'll just email right to you. All my books, you'll get the chapters from the books that drive the results. Th these are the free chapters, but it's not just like, hey, I'm trying to fluff you into buying the book. It is like the meat and, and potatoes. It will drive the results for you. So you get that for free. I used to write for the Wall Street Journal. You get that stuff. Um, I'm also a podcaster and blogger. So all that content is available in a single email. I, I have this one PDF where it's just, you can put on your desktop and click on all the links and get that material. It'll help you in your journey, I think. Awesome. Mike, this has been fantastic. I've had this on my That's calendar uh, with, with a lot of anticipation for a long time. I appreciate you joining us. Guys, Thank if you you're probably. watching this, um, leave, leave in the comments, uh, you know, what, what was your most meaningful takeaway from this interview? Um, I, I think uh, that would be really helpful for me, be useful for me. And, and Mike, I'd be happy to share that with you as well. I know that I'd be honest that is usually, uh, uh, usually good to hear. Uh, guys, go download those resources, start reading those things. Open, you, you'll, you'll learn how to do this. Open up another couple bank accounts and start actually 
keeping some of the money that you work so hard to earn. Um, with that in mind, uh, Mike, thank you so much. Uh, I hope we get a chance to do this again soon. That'd be fun. Reed, thank you. Take care.